So what would you say, uh, I've actually heard this one as a pastor and I had to take a beat before I responded because it was one of those that just, it irked me to be honest with you. Um, individuals that say, I have a family, I have work, I have hobbies, I have obligations, I, I ha I'm a deacon at the church, I serve at the church all the time, and then you're asking, telling me that I have to go out and serve my community. I don't have time for that, stop asking. Yes. How would you respond to somebody that says that? It's by individual. I think it's the Holy Spirit that persuades somebody. Uh, maybe some of the things he's doing are unnecessary and he can read, re, uh, uh, align his priorities to doing something more important than what he currently does. Mm -hmm. Most people are not doing very much. Okay. You heard from someone who's doing a lot, yeah. but others can re realign their priorities. Uh, one of my mentors uh, taught me, uh, always ask yourself the question, what's important? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as a local pastor, what's important? Well, I need to go see the Millers first, then I need to go see these people, and then I need to go see that. That's what's important. And when I got to a conference, Everything was important. So what's most important among all these important things that need to be done? And as I got to the, the North American Division, the General Conference, everything's important, but I still have to keep asking myself, what's important? You always go with your highest priority. Right. One day I was advising the President of the United States, Mr. President, may I ask you something? Yes. What's important? I even pushed him. Uh, you have to ask yourself, what is the priority? what's important and so really that's the point of this series that, that that folks need to ask themselves well i know what i've been doing yeah can i realign it can i adjust it more right now not too many people are being deacons they're at home because of the sequester of this uh, 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 calamity of a, of a virus it's not going to abate anytime soon so now what you did as a deacon what can replace it? And you're right, we're tired, we're exhausted, we come in from a full day. What's important? Yeah. And, and I think if the Lord guides us, it's learning a new habit. And the way you learn a new habit is to be repetitive with it. Repeat, repeat, and finally, it becomes commonplace to ask yourself, what's important? Do I fix the truck or can that wait till Sunday? And in these next three days, I can work with this. And see, and that kind of prioritization really builds your faith because it forces you to do yeah. what's important. Yeah. Yeah. There's also a, a, a somewhat of a parallel, I don't want to say, I guess attitude is a strong word, but I'll, I'll go ahead and use that for lack of a better one that's popping into my brain, that somehow ministers are paid and professionals in serving the community. Therefore, shouldn't we just have the professionals do it? That's why we pay our tithes and our offerings yes. to pay our professionals to do that type of work because yeah. they're the ones that are supposed to be good at it. I'm not going to be good at it. Yeah, that's not biblical. Uh, the Bible never said, let the few apostles handle all the work. If there's a million people to reach and you have 38 pastors, how in the world are 38 pastors equipped with all of their training and doctor's degrees uh, capable of reaching 38 million people? But if 10,000 church members decide, filled with the Holy Spirit, they go out and, and begin serving. Before you know it, it's 20,000 people's community says, can I help? Yes, we need your help. And, and you go to any of these service centers, there are a lot of non-believers in the group because they're saying, you guys are absolutely wonderful can I help yes and right there that's called evangelism yeah because it, we're, we're following the model of Christ it, it, there was one young man who went to John the Baptist I, I think I found this incredible guy uh, uh, and he says go 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 and see see so he sent him and he came back I have found the Messiah now it's important that he increases and I decrease. Yeah. See, and that's the beauty of this. That it, it spreads. It goes outward. And what 38 pastors did to mobilize 10,000 uh, uh, church members who now are reaching, uh, who have now been augmented by another 10,000, is 20,000 reaching outward. And all of a sudden, we haven't had a crusade. We already have a, uh, 71 baptisms for the year. What in the world's happening here? This is the experiences that I have seen in my own life. It, it's not a book that I read. I'm testifying. Number two, we only have 18,000 pastors left on planet Earth, Adventist pastors mm -hmm. uh, left. They're, they're still pastors training, but we're averaging about 18,000 pastors and about 20 million members. Yeah. 
So do the math. That's a very big ratio. Somebody, a mathematician, can say for all intents and purposes, the Adventist pastor does not exist. There are countries where an Adventist pastor has, uh, one of my friends, he says, I got a great district. It's one of the smaller ones. Oh, how many churches do you have? He says, I only have 40 churches. <laughs> only 40. Yeah. And one of my churches takes three days by donkey to reach it up in the mountains. <laughs> he doesn't get a four-wheel drive. Oh, wow. And the next year, somebody from Bay Bakersfield donated a truck to him because I told the story down there and we got a truck for this guy you yeah, know, yeah. so he can get up the mountain in less than three days. Yeah. See, the point being that we, we really have it, uh, uh, the ability, we have the capacity, we have the church members, we have the assets, meaning community service centers uh, the, and more stuff to come. Yes, it's hard work. Yes, it's brand new for most people. But so is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So is the economic crisis. Everything's new. So we must think in new ways. And it's not liberal. Yeah. It is ministry. And take it from those on the ground who are seeing the hand of God close up. This is what the Lord is doing. So I'm reporting to you what I'm seeing around the world. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. merely good advice for what you should do. And then I come to uh, Oregon Conference. And I see you guys already very aggressively involved for years now. Well, that's about to double. Uh, those of you watching Oregonders, a, a section of your property may be valuable for a community garden as suddenly people have no grocery money, but maybe they have an opportunity to grow their fruits and vegetables to feed their families. Pray about it. Think about it. Maybe that little corner of the, of the property that still has good soil can serve as something to help that part of the community for other folks who only have a house and they don't have a property. Remember, we may need each other like we never have before, yeah. and the Lord has blessed us. Somebody uh, watching may find that your stock suddenly paid off. A windfall because the stock market goes up one day and down the next and all of a sudden it went up and you have a stock that you didn't expect would pay off. Maybe this is the moment the Lord has indicated to you to donate to the evangelism offering, to donate to the worthy causes of what's coming up because we're going to need everybody. As a Navy, a sailor would say, uh, I remember when I'd hear the call on ship, uh, all hands on, on deck. deck. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely.